What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today I have a viewer suggestion or request, and that has to do with 6010. And you guys probably know how much I love 6010 and running it downhill versus uphill. And that would make for a great video. So that's what I'm going to be tackling today. That's what we're going to look at. So let's get into it. So 6010 is a great rod for welding on subpar material. It's a great rod for a root pass on thicker plate, provided it's not higher strength steel because this imparts hydrogen into the weld. And it's also a great rod for control. And what I mean by that is when you're welding an open root or a gap, this gives you the ability to bridge a pretty wide massive gap without stopping and essentially doing tack welds. And in the repair world, that's infinitely valuable because if you try and do a gap like this with 7018, all that's going to happen is it's going to drip right through and that's it. It'll take you forever versus 6010. It's uh, shockingly doable and that's like a quarter inch gap. You'd be shocked at what you can do with this rod. And one of the things you can do that isn't really permitted, generally speaking, with a lot of other rods is run downhill. So in a vertical sense, you can actually weld from the top down. If you were to try that with the 7018, what you would find is the flux would drip down and it's incredibly difficult to do. Now, I'll admit, I've done it before. 7018 can be run vertical down. It's not easy and it's very easy for things to go south on you. But with this rod 6010, and in the case of this, it's the 5P plus, the gray rod, it's actually fairly easy to run vertical down. The benefit primarily comes from uh, less penetration. So when you run 6010 vertical down on scabby material, especially thin material, it doesn't just blow right through it. So it acts more like a 6011 uphill per se, is that it's uh, a lot tamer. It just doesn't bite in as hard. The downside to that is you'll probably lose some root fusion and penetration running uh, vertical down. How much? I don't know. That's the purpose of this video. We're going to test and look at it. And that's why what I'm going to do is two fillet welds vertical up, two fillet welds vertical down. We're going to cut and etch them and look at the results to compare them to get an idea of what's going on. Now let's do a little bit of book learning and then we will go and do the actual welding. So what we have here on this poorly drawn picture is vertical down, the stick electrode is this, and then vertical up. One of the reasons you lose penetration and root fusion running vertical down is that the molten pool more essentially sinks and drips down. And because of that, you're welding here, okay? And you now have to weld through all this molten material to get back into the root of the plate to where it bites in. So all welding has a limit to how much metal, be it liquid or solid, that they can penetrate through. And simply welding through a thicker molten pool is gonna be a limiting factor in how much penetration you can get. When you run vertical up, what ends up happening is gravity pulls the molten pool down and you're able to stay on the leading edge and more or less hit the plate more so than the molten pool. So I guarantee you that there's going to be less penetration running vertical down. Now there's a couple other things to note regarding this. All welding processes have this same problem. MIG is especially bad because when you run gas shielded wire downhill, you get very basically no root fusion and very little penetration at all uh, on the sides near the root but it's far easier to run vertical down than vertical up. To run vertical up with MIG, you more or less have to run cold settings and weave in order to uphill weld, which that takes a lot of skill. So what ends up happening with MIG is a lot of guys that run it, they simply can't run, run vertical up, so they weld vertical down for everything that's uphill, and they produce very weak welds. So that is a limitation with MIG. With TIG, you can run vertical down without much of an issue simply because uh, you're able to achieve root fusion 
uh, regardless of uphill or downhill. The problem is, well, TIG doesn't put down any kind of metal, and I don't think you'd want to be welding, say, 3 8 or quarter inch steel all day with TIG. It's going to take you forever for non-critical work. So that doesn't really apply there, I guess. Now, like I said, 7018, you can run vertical down. The problem is go and try it one time and tell me why you don't want to do it. <laughs> You'll see within seconds why it's a bad idea. Now, with that said, there's one other thing I want to talk about. On open root welding, where, say, on pipe, now this isn't exactly a great example, but you have beveled ends and they have a gap and then you weld it. Vertical down with 6010 is an awesome solution because it's fast. It allows you to get control on the penetration through the pipe so you don't have over reinforcement inside the pipe so your root passes within spec. And like I said, it just gives you more control. When you start getting into 7018, you're more or less limited to vertical up. And if for whatever reason, what you're welding on requires open root 7018, that is, in my opinion, far more skillful of an endeavor than 6010. It's just you don't have the control that you need to get a good pass in. With that said, you have to understand that what you're going to see here today may not be applicable to what you're doing. And if you're doing some kind of code related work, follow what your procedure says. So if your procedure says 6010 uphill, don't go and run it downhill. There's good reason that they would specify it that way. So always follow your procedure. And if you're just fixing stuff around the barn, then this will definitely teach you a lot on what to expect. And that's the key of this, is that when you know what happens when you do something, you know if doing that is the right solution to what you need, if that makes sense. So with that said, let me get this stuff tack welded up, set up, and then we'll get to welding. All right, so I ran two passes up and down, and one of the things I forgot to mention, and it would have helped me if I would have remembered it, is that you want to adjust your dig setting when you're running vertical up or down. My dig setting was set at 70% on uh, Miller Dynasty that I happen to use to weld this, and that's far too high. If you don't have adjustable dig or arc force setting, that's fine. You obviously can't adjust it. If it is adjustable, you want your arc force low when you run vertical up and vertical down. Because what that does is you tighten the gap, it boosts the amperage. Well, the last thing you really want when welding vertical is more amperage. So I recognized something was up when I ran vertical up and I didn't realize that it was arc force. I stopped, lowered the amperage, and then it still was running way too hot. Guess what? Put too much heat into it. So the vertical up is definitely not the best looking weld. And I didn't really clean these with a wire wheel. I couldn't find one, but for what we're doing, they'll be just fine. So let's talk about what we got. Running vertical down with a straight in, no oscillation produces a weld that very much looks like a 7018 uh, run normally. When we look at the other side, that was the first pass. Here's the second pass that literally 100% looks like a flatter 7018. So very attractive looking weld. And a lot of people don't realize that 6010 can produce very clean looking welds. It's just you got to run it vertical down to get it. The arc gap running vertical down is actually pretty substantial. And that is part of the reason why it makes a flat weld. Because as that arc gap lengthens, the arc cone pushes and drives less in the center so you get an overall flatter bead profile. 
the first vertical up I did was inconsistent as hell. I tried to do it uh, in front of the camera and that was a huge mistake because guess what, body position was bad. So then I went and did it on this side. Uh, I wish I could find a wire wheel to clean this better because it's very difficult due to all the ridges on 6010 to clean it with a brush. Like running downhill, it's far easier. It comes off vertical up because of the places for it to catch a little bit worse. But this isn't too bad. Um, there's a little bit of undercut here at the end to be expected running vertical up without a tight arc gap here. And this is going to be, I guess, typical. Now, when we cut and etch these, I'm going to cut them right in the middle. And this will give us about the fairest example for both of them of what to expect for root fusion. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll cut both of these and then let's come back and talk about it. So I have both of them cut and etched. So let's look at the normal uphill. So this is the vertical up weld. High five for some undercut. Oh well, stuff happens. So anyways, looking at this, we have good sidewall fusion, good root fusion, and this is going to be typical of what you find with 6010. Now had I ran a little bit more amperage and less dig, it might be a little bit better. Hard to say on that. Let's contrast that to the vertical down weld. So the vertical down weld basically lost all of the fusion. This doesn't even look like the same rod was ran when you look at it. I'm kind of surprised at how much it lost on the sidewall fusion. I expected it to be far less on the root fusion, but this is pretty bad. The pass on the right was done first, then the pass on the left. I think the plates being a little bit hotter might have helped it a little bit, but I'm sure if I cut it in a bunch of different places, it's going to be plus or minus what you see here. But there's no doubt 100% you're going to lose a significant amount of penetration and sidewall fusion. I line these up to where they're the same scale and you look at that difference. Like I said, it's almost like two different welding rods were used. The other thing you guys got to remember is this was done on completely clean plates. If you were welding through paint or some kind of contaminant, it would probably be even worse than what you're looking at here running vertical down. All right, let's move on. So those results were in complete contrast to one another and actually, I'll be honest, far more than I would have expected. Now, I'll be honest, I don't run 6010 on 3.8 plate on fillet welds like this. I do use it on thinner material, especially vertical down where I'm trying not to blow holes through something. So there are applications to vertical down. If it's welding 3 8 plate, I would say that is definitely not one of them. But part of the reason why I picked this was, well, this was a scrap I had laying around. And two, this will bring out the differences far better than, say, eighth inch material. So on eighth inch, the results will probably be closer to one another than this. But again, this is to give you a broad overview of what's actually going on. Now, like I said, there are circumstances that you would want to run vertical down. If you're welding pipe with open root where penetration isn't really what you want, you just want fusion and a little bit extra, running vertical down gives you the control you need rather than blowing a hole and having a super wide keyhole. So there are benefits to it. It's just in select circumstances. The other thing that I didn't mention, and it proves how important it is to know what's behind your weld, aka do a cut and etch. When you just visually look at these two, you would assume the one on the left is far worse and terrible and probably not that good of a weld because it looks rough, partially because it's completely full of slag still because I didn't clean it. And then the one on the right here, because of how clean and nice it looks, you would think this would be stronger. Yet the complete lack of fusion and minimal sidewall fusion, I bet in a bend test or a brake test, this would fail far before this would. And this really drives the point home of how important it is to test stuff yourself to know what you're getting. Because regardless of what you see in this video, what I claim, or what anyone else on YouTube claims, you have to test stuff for yourself to know what you're getting. The other thing that I personally learned is always check what your settings are. 
If you don't have any settings, even better, that's easy. You don't have to check it, but I knew that something wasn't right when I ran the vertical up, and having that super high arc force doesn't really do much good when you're trying to hold a tight arc and control your puddle. Puddle kept getting out of control. So I backed the, the amperage down almost immediately when I realized it, and well, guess what? <laughs> we now have a cold weld going uphill. And the funny thing is, even though both of these were run at about 80 amps, they had drastically better fusion than one run at 90. So had I bumped this back up to 90 amps or so with the arc force real low, the dig low at like 20, 30%, I would have got a little bit flatter of a bead, likely the same or more penetration and a better looking bead than what we got there. So settings do matter. With that said, hopefully you learned something. Until next time.